my name is Claudio Pogliotti, I'm working at CM and uh, I'm uh, following, I mean, this uh, project since the very beginning, since when this project was uh, under the preparation. This is a, a EU funded uh, project under the, work pro the research program H2020 with the aim of uh, contributing to the, the dialogue between the African Union and the EU on the on research innovation in the sector of food, nutrition, sustainable agriculture is coordinated by FARA and CIRAD. And uh, I'm also very happy that CM is taking part as a member of this uh, project as an important partner uh, responsible of the activities of uh, communication and, and dissemination. Uh, a bit, bit very, very short. Uh, I mean, actually, this is one of the many events that the Leap for FNSSA is organizing. Actually, very recently, we have been organizing also a stakeholder event and awareness meeting. Uh, and all these events, including today, are aimed anyway at one objective, just to try to share and try to pass the message of uh, the importance of uh, a building uh, a long-standing and stable cooperation between the uh, African Union and the European uh, uh, Member State and Europe, I would say, but particularly the researchers and the actors of both sides. Um, to do today, we will do the same, like in the other events. We try really to. Uh, to, to share with you as much as possible what we have been doing before and uh, but the, in the same time trying to to trigger the the, 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 the the attention and trigger the interest of all participants to contribute or to join uh, the future activities which are also planned behind the the, the lifespan of the project and it will be shown after by other colleagues how and when and what. Um, so, I mean, uh, I see that the, the agenda is, is very dense for being an agenda, okay, in a remote mode. Um, I only want to just close thanking the European Commission and particularly uh, Marta Iglesias for joining us and, uh, and, and give us some uh, uh, some other than uh, what the prospect of the commission is about uh, the the, <coughs> the the prospect of uh, the collaboration and the cooperation between the uh, African Union and the EU. Uh, of course, I mean I want to also thank uh, in advance all the panelists uh, for accepting to participate and give their contribution. Uh, and the team of CM, of course, I mean, Gaetano, Ladisa, Carlos San Siviero, Giuseppe Saracino, and also the ITC, the ICT of ITC colleagues, Giorgio Martin and others, to support the organization of the meeting. Uh, so I keep uh, the floor to Gaetano just to conclude this first, okay, introduction, this preliminary introduction. Thank you, Claudio. Um, let me just share the screen. Uh, what is it? What's going on? Okay. Um, so, welcome to everybody. Uh, my uh, few words are uh, aimed to uh, depict the uh, the uh, the event objective and uh, main uh, structure. Um, so uh, as uh, all the uh, previous uh, uh, dissemination event, and uh, uh, now we have here uh, Eric Mwangi, that was one of the facilitator, one of the uh, contribute, main contributor to the first dissemination event. Uh, the uh, general scope of this event is to inform participants on the project activities. But uh, 
uh, in the specific, this kind of event that we are living today is uh, main focus on the uh, triggering uh, the attention of people of different kind of actors uh, to the uh, on building uh, 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 African European uh, platform on research for research and innovation in the sector of the food nutrition and sustainable agriculture. Uh, in this uh, view, uh, uh, special attention will be devoted to uh, illustrate uh, the approach, the theoretical approach uh, to the platform and how this kind of platform could be uh, implemented in the uh, midterm. Um, and also uh, one of the objective of the event is also to uh, collect the expression of interest of people to join uh, the process for building this platform. Um, uh, don't be scared about this kind of uh, flow chart, but uh, uh, I think that this can uh, uh, illustrate uh, all the, uh, the whole process leading to uh, this event. Uh, in the, we started uh, in April uh, with uh, an open consultation uh, involving uh, uh, about 600 people uh, coming from the world continent, the European and the African continent, uh, asking them what kind of services uh, uh, the platform uh, should provide uh, and what kind of uh, actor uh, could be involved in the process. Um, uh, this uh, uh, open consultation um, anticipate the uh, second raising awareness event prepared by the uh, Ministry of Higher Education and Research of Egypt. Uh, and uh, now we have here our colleague uh, Noran El Dalal uh, in, as a representative of the, the ministry. Uh, and the second raising awareness event go deeper in, the, uh, uh, in this uh, uh, analysis uh, um, and uh, prepared also a background paper uh, collecting the uh, uh, the outcome of this event. So uh, both those events, the uh, report from the open consultation, the background paper, uh, can feed the debate uh, of the, our panel session, together with the, the outcome coming from uh, the uh, stakeholding engagement week that was a, a very a successful event uh, held uh, 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 in early June uh, and uh, um, the debate uh, uh, that will be held in the dissemination during the dissemination event today uh, um, will face uh, mainly the challenges posed by uh, the research innovation in the uh, African continent and the needs expressed by the different uh, uh, kind of stakeholder uh, from the uh, uh, point of view of the, the, the uh, research innovation and uh, um, asking to the uh, the platform. Uh, there are there are also uh, the uh, uh, African Union and the European Union expectation about the platform, uh, and uh, uh, such expectation lead to uh, uh, plan uh, uh, a proposal for the platform that will be uh, discussed and presented today. Uh, in order to uh, enlarge or to start uh, uh, in creating uh, the partnership and uh, network uh, around this kind of uh, platform. And uh, for, uh, for this reason, at the end of the event, we share with all the participants uh, a, a format uh, in which they can express their interest to join the process uh, of the building of this kind of platform. Um, in this uh, <laughs> journey, we will be uh, uh, together with the uh, 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 relevant speakers uh, that we guide us in the, uh, in the debate, uh, um, summarizing the step uh, before uh, this event, and also 
uh, we will meet uh, uh, a number of panelists that uh, uh, for their specific profile as stakeholder, um, some of them are decision maker, other are coming from uh, funding agencies, there are uh, entrepreneurs, there are also uh, member of institution involved in the capacity building uh, and uh, also end users in the uh, farm sector. Uh, uh, all those panelists uh, uh, will present their point of view about uh, uh, the platform and uh, uh, about the, uh, uh, the main needs that the platform can satisfy. So uh, uh, the agenda uh, will be shared, was shared uh, with all the participants. So uh, I don't spend more time about this. Uh, so uh, uh, I will thank you all for your participation and uh, uh, wish you all a, a fruitful uh, uh, dissemination event today. Uh, I give the floor to Claudio to introduce uh, the uh, keynote speaker, uh, Marco Iglesias. Claudio, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. If you can just, okay. Thank you, thank you, Gaetano. Uh, well, I mean, I just give straight to, to uh, Marta Iglesias, I work at the European Commission, and uh, she is the policy officer of this, uh, of this project. Please, Marta, the floor is yours. You have 15 uh, minutes. Yes. Yes, I will probably do it less. Okay, just a good morning. Thank you, Claudio and Caetano for your introduction and for the invitation to be here with you to support you with the um, dissemination activities of the Lead for SNSSA project and in particular engaging with potential actor in present and future activities. I in particular would like to congratulate the project for your excellent support that you have been providing so far to the EU Africa Research and Innovation FNSSA a partnership under the High Level Policy Dialogue Bureau. For me today is a great, a great pleasure and an honor to be with you. Um, just to recall that ensuring food, global food and nutrition security is one of the main objectives of the EU Africa scientific cooperation, where both continents join forces to address the current and the future challenges faced by African and European agri-food systems, such as climate change, pest outbreaks, land degradation, and emergency crisis like the COVID-19. Today, more than ever, this EU-AU cooperation is in the spotlight of several political communications, such as the communication towards a comprehensive strategy with Africa, published in March 2020, which called to set up cooperation in research and innovation with Africa. The global EU responses to COVID-19, published in, in, in April 2021, which also has a strong focus on research and innovation in Africa. Both are in line with European Commission Green Deal priorities, which includes developing a green growth model, improving the business environment, and investing in climate research and innovation. In July 2020, the European Union and the African Union Research and Innovation Ministers met for the first time and discussed over four areas of cooperation, public health, green transition, innovation and technology, and capacities for science. Ministers highlighted the importance of investing, investing into a green and sustainable economy through the research and innovation partnership, such as the ones that we have today, the FNSSA partnership, and the one on climate change and sustainable energy. The FNSSA partnership was the first one set up under the EU-AU High-Level Policy Dialogue Bureau, contributing to the strength, strengthening the European and the African science base by supporting scientific excellence across continents. The joint actions taken under this partnership will enable the necessary transition towards, ag towards agriculture and food systems that are more resilient, equitable, and with low carbon emissions, Investment in r &I can enable this green transition towards solutions that are equally strong in environmental, economic, social, and agronomic dimensions, and at the same time, provide greater resilience against threats, lessen its impacts, and, and create added value to the joint actions. Since the adoption of the FNSSA 10-year roadmap in 2016, 
the FNSSA partnership has specifically focused on research and innovation actions to support sustainable intensification of agricultural production systems, food systems for nutrition, and the expansion and improvement of agricultural markets and trade. Based on past experience analysis and the new political orientations, the FNSSA partnership should contribute with knowledge and innovations to unlock Africa's potential to make progress towards food and nutrition security, a sustainable greener agriculture and circular food systems. In this context, the current and future activities of the FNSSA partnership will build on existing activities, benefit to the extent possible from investments, and most importantly, maximize the impact of the activities undertaken through an, effect, an effective valorization of the r &I results, providing support to move results from lab to market. For that, it is important to have in place a support structure to transform the FNSA partnership into a sustainable long-term platform for collaboration, for which a long-term governance mechanism needs to be created. These mechanisms will ensure the exchange of information between different projects and look for synergies between fund different funding instruments, including public and private funding. The future EU-AU FNSSA platform will gather all Africans and European institutions, stakeholders and networks committed to work in a coordinated way implementing the high-level policy dialogue FNSSA roadmap. The platform will be open to the entire research and innovation community and will address the fragmentation of initiative by embedding activities in the high-level policy dialogue process. Based on the existing proven success of other international research and innovation platforms in the form of an international research consortium, the African Union Commission and the European Commission have considered this option as the adequate flat platform able to support a long-term knowledge management, communication and governance mechanism for the EU-AU FNSSA partnership. To this end, the European Commission with the African Union Commission have proposed to deliver for NFS for FNSSA project to focus its activities to design and implement this international research consortium as the desired platform for the long-term EU-AU FNSSA partnership. The International Research Consortium platform will identify clearly concrete objectives supported by a flexible governance structure capable to coordinate international research actions and at the same time provide a rapid response when needed. This international research consortium can encompass the program and innovation management cycle, the PIMC model, as a starting point for the development of a suitable methodology to monitor and evaluate the output of the relevant projects funded under the partnership, but it cannot be considered as the platform as such. The PNC model does not play the role of a platform and the European Commission considers that limiting it to the PMC model would be against the long-term effectiveness of the FNSSA. Just to conclude, I will add to stress two elements. First, we have this FNSSA partnership, which is a well-established partnership that can provide the basis for our enhanced cooperation. So let us together design today its sustainability in the future. And second, it is important to give visibility to the achievements made and turn these results into innovative solutions, supporting food and nutrition security and the green transition, bringing benefits for our people. This is why we need to have in place a sustainable platform in the long term to support this partnership. I am very much looking forward to see the fruits of this event. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you have a very nice discussion. Thank you, Claudio. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Marta. I think you <coughs> you just mentioned some very key words, I mean, uh, uh, in the frame of the cooperation uh, African Union and EU, and I think uh, these key words uh, behind the food, nutrition, and sustainable agriculture is the linking with the Green Deal, the linking with the um, with the green transition and uh, unfortunately because of today's situation also the uh, COVID-19 I think I mean that I mean uh, it is a must that the platform okay which will be contributed by LIB for FNSSA and announced by uh, the uh, <coughs> commission 
uh, is looking at the very long term, just because of these uh, uh, circumstances today of uh, possible pandemics which will occur again. So, I mean, it, it is extremely important to look at this, the, 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 the long term, but of course, we must also be pragmatic and hope, I mean, to get, okay, something today very concrete to provide to the to the major actors with so thank you very much marta for uh, for your um uh, very 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 clear prospect i mean it is a very rich prospect what you have told us today yeah, thank you cloud i think in truly we have a great opportunity and i'm just want to encourage not to 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 miss this train so thank you for for your words yeah thank you thank you so i give uh, the floor back to gaetano because uh, i see that uh, he is i mean facilitating i mean the next uh, session now yeah thank you claudio uh, now um, we enter in the session related to the preparing the ground so uh, uh, in this view, uh, we um, collected the uh, input from uh, our colleague, uh, Carlos Ansiviero, uh, uh, that is a member of the communication uh, staff of the Siambari, uh, who will uh, uh, show us the um, outcome, the results from the open consultation. Uh, then uh, the, uh, the contribution of Noran El Dalal, uh, our colleague of the Ministry uh, of Higher Education uh, from Egypt, uh, who summarized the um, outcome from uh, the second raising awareness event uh, um, and the background paper. And then uh, um, Melissa Platt from uh, the Finnish University uh, uh, show us the um, main uh, outcome, the feedback from the uh, stakeholder engagement week. It was, uh, uh, as I told uh, before, a very successful event uh, in which uh, a lot of input from the on building uh, platform uh, were collected. So I give the floor to Carlo. Uh, please, Carlo. Thank you, Gaetano. Good morning, everyone. I try to share my screen. Okay. So I will present the results of the open consultation that we launched on the 12th of April, and it was closed one month later. The objective of this survey, so of this open consultation, was to collect feedback on possible action to build the brand new Europe Africa multi stakeholder platform. That is the focal and central point of this second dissemination event. Briefly, the platform will bring together research and innovation efforts and investments in the field of food, nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture as described in the AU EU high level policy dialogue roadmap. The survey was addressed to the main actors of FNSSA. Actually, we identify six stakeholder categories, including funders, decision makers, research and innovation institutions, capacity building institutions, farmers and consumers. A brief overview about the structure of the open consultation. The, the questionnaire was very short, just six questions from question one up to question three. There were questions dedicated to general information, so respondents profiling. After that, in the question four, respondents were asked to indicate which of the six stakeholder categories they represent. According to their choice, so to their category, the respondents were asked to express the level of agreement about some services that the platform should provide. Their level of agreement was rated with a Likert scale from one strongly disagree up to five strongly agree. 
last question of the questionnaire, question six, was dealing with the factors that can ensure the future sustainability of the platform. This question was common to all the stakeholder categories. And in particular, also in this case, was rated with a Likert scale from one up to five. We disseminated the consultation, the questionnaire through two different channels. The first one for the wider public through the Leap for FNSSA official website and the Agora and the social channels. And on the other side, we selected some key respondents among our contact database and we sent to them a direct email to ask them to participate in this consultation process. For the, from the wider public, we collect more than 500 responses. And for the key respondents, more selected, we collected about 90 answers. These two graphs show the composition of the two samples according to gender. As you can see, the two samples show to be comparable in terms of male and female ratio. These two graphs show the composition of wider public and key respondents according to region. Most wider public respondents belong to North Africa, while the group of key respondents is more focused on Western Africa. These two graphs show the composition of the both group of respondents according to the stakeholder category, the six stakeholder categories. Also in this case, the two samples are perfectly comparable. And it is very, very important to underline that most common answer, both for the water public and for the key respondents, came from research and innovation institutions, as you can see in this slide. Okay, with this question, the question five was dealing with the specific session of the stakeholder categories. So this one was dedicated to the funders. In blue, you can see the answer of the wider public. And in orange, you can see the answer of the key respondents. The wider public selected easy access to information about different actors profile in research and innovation um, uh, as the most important service, while the key respondents select access to startups, innovators, profiles, and ideas as the most important service that the platform should provide. The aim of this slide is to show the difference or the same view of both group of respondents about the services. Decision makers selected access to catalog of funding opportunities as the most important service while in orange, the key respondents select updated FNSSA country profiles. The two groups expressed high enough score and convergent views about most proposed services, as you can see in this graph. Research and innovation institutions. In blue, the wider public select offers and opportunities for mobility and connectivity as the most quoted service. And in this case, key respondents selected exactly the same service. So for both groups, the most important service is exactly the same. Key respondents also considered, among others, three other services as being important. For the capacity building institution category, the wider public selected multi-stakeholder communication mechanism, situation analysis and foresight and training requests and opportunities as the most important services that the platform should provide. It is important to underline that also in this case, key respondents were in agreement with the wider public selecting training requests and opportunities as the most important service. 
In general, the two groups expressed a very, very similar preference for nearly all proposed services. For the farmers, the most voted service was information on funding opportunities. While for the key respondents, beyond information on agricultural practices and new technology, we, they select exactly the same information on funding opportunity. In general, they both express their preference for the same service. Last stakeholder categories was the consumer and the wider public select disseminating research outputs on FNSSA and access to healthy food at low price on neighbor markets. While key respondents selected unanimously repository of information on local food as the most voted service. Last question of the questionnaire was dedicated to the sustainability, to the factors that can ensure the future sustainability of the platform. We listed some factors and all the stakeholder categories was, to, was asked to express the level of agreement. In general, as you can see, they, there is no marked difference between both group of respondents, key respondents and wider public in the choice of these factors. I want to conclude saying that key respondents and wider public seem to have the same approach and views regarding the services of the platform. Only for funders and consumers, responses were quite different both groups indicate the following services as the most important. Offers and opportunity for mobility and connectivity for research and innovation institutions. Training requests and opportunity for capacity building institutions and information on funding opportunities for the farmers. As to the factors that can ensure the platform sustainability, both groups agree that user-friendly and accessible services high quality services provided and ensure EU, EU institution participation as the most important factors. So in conclusion, these are the services that the platform have to propose, have to um, offer. So thank you everybody for your attention. I come back to my colleague Gaetano. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Carlo. Uh, we will stop your stop share. share. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank Carlo. you Carlo. Thank you, Carlo. Uh, so um, uh, I give the floor now to uh, to Noren. Uh, as you can uh, see in the slide uh, uh, presented by Carlo, uh, there was a uh, um, a clear uh, identification of uh, some kind of services, uh, both uh, from the key respondent and the general public. And there is also a convergence uh, among the different uh, uh, stakeholder profiles. Uh, now I, I give the floor to, to Noran uh, uh, and uh, I ask her to uh, illustrate uh, the outcome of uh, the second raising awareness event. Uh, and uh, um, I think that the, uh, the, the content of the background paper can uh, provide uh, useful input for uh, the next steps in uh, building the, uh, uh, the, the platform. The floor is your honor. Thank you, Gaetano, so much. Um... Hi everyone, this is Mariana Dalil um, from the Egyptian Ministry of no, Higher I'm Education sorry. and uh, Scientific Research. Raise your voice, please. Okay, can you hear me now? I hope this is better. Okay, perfect. So just one second, I will share my screen. Uh, 
so I would just be giving you a brief, like Gaetano said, on the second raising awareness event that was held by Leap for FNSSA in the last month under the title of Drivers and Dynamics of Creating an Enabling Environment for the FNSSA Platform. Uh, this event was the second in a series of raising awareness events um, that aim to support the implementation of the EU Africa Research and Innovation Partnership on FNSSA. And um, the discussions were, were based uh, on two previously had events like the ones uh, that were shown in Gaetano's diagram in the beginning. The first raising awareness event that was held in November in 2020 and uh, the West Africa workshop that was held in October also last year. Uh, so in order to uh, establish um, a sustainable platform as described in the, um, oops, sorry, uh, as described in the FNSSA roadmap, we need to uh, create synergies and coherence between the different stakeholders. And we also need to focus on the intersection between all the needs and the strength of each of these stakeholders to create a tailored um, FNSSA um, partnership and platform uh, between the diverse stakeholders. So briefly, I would just want to give you um, an idea on the outputs that came from the different workshops that were previously had, the West Africa workshop and the Raising Awareness event. So without going into many details, this workshop of West Africa uh, initiated a process toward creating a West African alliance that would feed into um, the envisaged overall AU-EU coordination platform. And it also exposed young entrepreneurs to investors, scientists, and decision makers in order to engage in the involvement of businesses and develop the partnership. The outcomes were based on three main pillars the involvement of stakeholders, the governance of the partnership, and the communication and functional contributions. And um, these outcomes were suggested by all the panelists and participants in the event. Uh, for example, for the stakeholder involvement, the role of entrepreneurs is um, key, the establishing of farmers cooperatives, capacity building in the governance. We have to base the partnership on public-private partnerships, strengthening the collaboration between different actors, um, creating innovation hubs, creating platforms for agri-contents and uh, scaling up of agro-production. For the first raising awareness events, the aim was to propose methods to increase the resilience of rural areas to withstand crisis and to promote the implementation of the platform and discuss the role of an inclusive model in overcoming these challenges. Also, the outcomes were based on the same three pillars, the stakeholder involvement included establishing a network of all stakeholders, participation of European and African youth in policy dialogue, and reaching out to entrepreneurs. The governance framework for the partnership, suggestions were about growing importance of the private sector and trade investments, how to apply a participatory approach and co-creation of research agendas. For the communication and functional contributions, um, all the attendees stressed on the importance of avoiding duplication with existing initiatives and building on what already exists, strengthening access to financial products and connecting European and African tech ventures focusing on agriculture. So back to the second raising awareness event that was based on these two previous uh, outcomes that we just presented. The objectives of the second raising awareness event was first to highlight the added value of the proposed IRC platform uh, by presenting this platform and the potential services that it could offer, and also by presenting other examples from the current landscape of existing platforms and programs in order to avoid duplication. The second objective was to discuss the EU-AU FNSSA Research and Innovation Partnership as a game changer and how to move from the usual aid paradigm to a real balanced partnership between the two continents. And this was discussed uh, by um, aligning on AU-EU priorities in the field, in the FNSSA field, be based on different agendas from the two continents, and discussing the role of different stakeholders in shaping uh, the proposed platform. So briefly, these were the topics that were discussed in our event, the IRC platform, um, and the since AgriMadri and PayPal, these are just examples from the current projects. Um, and how is FNSSA at the center of the 2030 agenda and the African agenda 2063, how to connect innovation, education and business creation, how to catalyze the involvement of private sector and finally the knowledge co-creation 
and multi-stakeholder platforms. So the main outcomes of this event, uh, first concerning the platform that is proposed, uh, the platform will fulfill three main objectives. Uh, first, it will create synergies between the R&I programs and initiatives and actors. It will also help identify partners in R&I and find appropriate funding opportunities. And it will also boost innovation by showcasing solutions that work and support creativity um, and expertise of all stakeholders. Uh, some of the be best practices that were mentioned um, and uh, that we need to build on and we need to learn from these initiatives is that the African-European partnership needs some time to build trust and time for cultural integration. And that the communication is a very catalytic element for the multi-stakeholder platform to keep the motivation. The multi-stakeholder platforms have several positive results, including policy changes, increased yields and incomes for smallholder farmers. And uh, the MSSPs consider the agricultural learning process in value chain context as being key to building transformative capacities for the beneficiaries. Um, we also discussed how FNSSA is key to achieving the entire set of SDGs and the agenda uh, 2063 and how it, it is affected uh, by the partnership and by working together, by interconnecting these agendas and sharing the knowledge among countries, this is an essential point, and how uh, COVID-19 has prompted um, everyone to rethink the way we produce and process and consume, and how we can uh, be more responsive and recover uh, from such a crisis and uh, coordinate better to build back better and adopt a holistic approach. For catalyzing the private sector, we need to connect the innovation, education, and business creation together. We need to enhance the use of technologies and digitalization. And we need to build a consumer-centric connected food system to develop a digital food supply network and engage in dialogue with the food industry and co-create the future of the food systems together. So just to wrap up and summarize uh, the key findings and the lessons learned from the second raising awareness event, also on the same three pillars that we discussed, the governance, the stakeholder involvement, and the functionalities of the platform. For the governance of the partnership, we need to create synergies between the many R&I programs. We need capacity to reflect and learn together and to create a shared vision among the partners. Uh, we need effective uh, M&E to monitor the targets and measure progress. We need to bridge the missing middle between the global scale and the national capacities. And we need to ensure the sustainability of the platform. Uh, for the communication and functional contributions of the platform, a digital platform is required where communication is a catalytic element. We need a best practice catalog as a reference. We need to boost innovation uh, and enhance the use of technology and digitalization. And finally, for the stakeholder involvement, we need to support uh, the private sector, including SMEs. We need to reduce the um, hassle of identifying partners, engage in dialogue with the food industry, and build a consumer-centric connected food system to develop a digital food supply network. Thank you so much. Thank you, Norm, for uh, your valuable uh, uh, um, input. Uh, I think that uh, uh, this kind of material could provide uh, fuel for the discussion, uh, even during uh, uh, the panel session then uh, after this event uh, in order to fix uh, how the platform can uh, work. Um, so uh, now uh, I give the floor to our colleague Melissa, uh, Melissa Platt, uh, 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 that uh, uh, will share with us uh, the feedback coming from the um, stakeholder engagement week. Uh, uh, during uh, this event, uh, some uh, uh, um, very interesting uh, uh, end uh, uh, was provided to the, uh, the, the on building uh, uh, platform process. So the floor is your Melissa, please. Thank you, uh, Gaetano, and, and good morning to everyone. It's a, a pleasure to be here. Uh, to present the outcomes from the FNSSA Stakeholder Engagement Week, uh, which, which happened uh, at the end of uh, May, the beginning of June. 
I will now share my screen. Let's see. Do you see uh, the presentation now in presentation mode? Yes, no? Yes, we can see it. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> I want to give you first a little bit uh, of a snapshot from the week so you kind of get the, the overview of, of what we were doing. Uh, the aim of the FNSSA Stakeholder Engagement Week was to bring together the stakeholders who are already involved in or could be involved in the partnership, the AU, African Union, European Union partnership uh, in food, nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture. Uh, we aimed to present uh, some of the activities that were going on in this, this uh, partnership and also to uh, find ways to kind of work uh, a bit close, more closely together. In order to do that, we had five days of discussion on research and innovation cooperation in FNSSA. We had 17 sessions on topics such as innovation, multi-stakeholder partnerships, knowledge sharing, impact, science-informed decision-making, and more. Uh, and we had uh, almost 1,400 participations from stakeholders uh, in Africa and Europe. So it was a, a rather large uh, week and very crowded week of an event, but we are very uh, pleased with some of the outcomes. And uh, in particular, I would like to share with you some of the key messages from, from the week. Uh, and in particular, those that are related to the kind of development uh, of, this, of this partnership uh, and platform. The first key message is that the AU-EU Research and Innovation Partnership in FNSSA is a model of cooperation between Africa and Europe. One of the ways that this is a model is because of its joint design, joint ownership, joint management, and joint research, resourcing which are some of the key features of the partnership itself. It's based on a strong political momentum, which is getting more fuel with the kind of emerging policies. We've already spoken about the, the Green Deal, uh, as well as new funding. Um, and in particular, we see that in Horizon Europe, there is um, the Africa Initiative, which is bringing together uh, significant funding to support uh, co collaboration between uh, uh, African and European partners and also uh, collaboration in FNSSA. Uh, this partnership is diverse and it's a rich landscape of stakeholders who are involved. The second key finding or, or key message is that a future platform for cooperation between the two regions should be sustainable, meaning it should continue to operate in the long term. It should be democratic, uh, meaning that it should respond to existing needs and political priorities. And it should be inclusive, meaning that it should include a, a diversity of stakeholders and actors. But uh, this future uh, platform for cooperation should also promote uh, the creation of innovative funding mechanisms, uh, impact on both continents, and guidance for policymakers. Uh, one of the key messages, and I think this has been reflected already in, in some of the other uh, findings from that have been presented, is the fact that multi-stakeholder par partnerships are of paramount, uh, paramount importance to ensure well-targeted and appropriate interventions and to maximize the adoption and impact. Uh, some of the kind of key issues related to these multi-stakeholder partnerships uh, the first is that diversity is, is important, and I think this, this point has already been mentioned earlier. Uh, the second is that um, interactions between actors uh, at, and at different levels um, support this, this impact uh, and also help us to have a convergence of views and the definition of, of a sort of joint vision. Uh, I think Norhan also mentioned this, and it's clearly becoming an important, uh, an important feedback, uh, which is that reflection and learning 
uh, together is a very important uh, part of this process and having the capacity to do so, but also the time to do so uh, is very important. Um, what we have seen and what, what uh, feedback we heard from the week is that multi-stakeholder uh, multi approaches encourage innovation uh, and the, the development of shared visions. Uh, but these need time, uh, trust is needed and time is needed to, to build uh, trust. So we should really continue to think in the long term in order to be able to build this, uh, this trust and, and to re reflect together. Uh, finally, brokers in research and innovation play a crucial but underestimated role to facilitate collaboration and to help uh, have this kind of convergence of views. Um, a few notes of feedback for, for policies and for the future that emerged from the Stakeholder Engagement Week. Uh, the first is that, and I think this is important to mention, uh, that the outcomes from this week are uh, contributing to the preparations for the UN Food Systems Summit and the AU-EU Summit. Uh, we are, are currently in the midst of preparing an outcome document, which will be uh, circulated to policymakers and decision makers uh, for, for their kind of uh, preparations for these two uh, important, important events. Um, the second is that the FNSSA partnership supports emerging AU and EU policies, and it will continue to remain an important tool for science diplomacy in the future. Uh, I think the partnership has already proven to be an important tool for science diplomacy between the two regions. And because of the relevance and the, the continued uh, support for this partnership, it will continue to play a similar role. For the future, uh, we saw the par participants are interested in more and more diverse research and innovation collaborations. Uh, there is high level polit political support for the development of this IRC platform, uh, which would continue to be based on some of these key principles of the partnership, and especially those that I mentioned earlier uh, about joint management, joint resourcing, uh, et cetera. Uh, and finally, there's interest and engagement from the research and innovation communities, but uh, we still need to make more effort to attract the pri private sector to be part of this partnership. So a few key um, keywords for, for uh, summarizing what we heard from the Stakeholder Engagement Week. Uh, first, as I said, joint design, ownership, management, and resourcing is critical. Uh, this future platform needs to be sustainable, democratic, and inclusive, and it should be have impact, diversity, and be innovative. Uh, Multi-stakeholder partnerships and, and interactions are important for this platform, and they should be uh, facilitated within it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you very much. Uh, you go straight forward to the point, so uh, we try to uh, collect all uh, the input uh, coming from uh, this first uh, uh, session. Uh, um, as you can uh, hear from our speaker, uh, the process in building uh, this platform uh, have different steps and uh, collected input from different events. Uh, uh, just because this uh, uh, second dissemination event is not a standalone event and. Uh, just to uh, reaffirm that uh, uh, all the uh, events in the project are in a certain way connected and aimed to, to reach the, uh, a unique uh, objective. Now, um, just to uh, have a, a sort of a break uh, from between this se the, the session already uh, concluded and the next one, uh, we want to share with the, all the participants uh, um, uh, this link. Uh, uh, I copy on the, the chat so uh, all of you can uh, can uh, um, so can see in the chat the, the, this link. 
uh, what we uh, ask to all the participants and also to the speaker is to uh, um, express uh, the idea uh, or to describe the ideal uh, platform with, with a, 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 an adjective. So uh, just uh, fill in uh, in the uh, open the link and fill in the uh, the line and uh, put uh, in the line uh, uh, an adjective who can describe uh, the platform according with your uh, idea. Uh, you can uh, have uh, multiple uh, enter, so uh, don't worry about this. Um, I share the, the link. Do you see the link? Okay. And no, I want to put put the spec spectator. Yes. Uh, and I share the uh, the the presentation. Può entrare, può iniziare a scrivere tu, no? Sì, un po'? Ok. Devo far partire il controller relation, non l'ho fatto. Ok, few seconds. Okay. Okay. So, uh, it seems that uh, the more commonly uh, written adjective is uh, inclusive. So the inclusiveness is one of the main characters of this uh, platform. Uh, together with uh, uh, the needs to be, to be interactive and simple. So I think that uh, this kind of uh, adjective, th those three adjectives, interactive, inclusive, and simple, could be the pillars on which we can uh, build our uh, EU, EU uh, uh, platform in the future. And now we go deeper in the theoretical and practical approach uh, to the platform. 
uh, in this uh, uh, um, in this way uh, we uh, um, have the support of uh, uh, two colleagues, uh, Stefan Afner from the DLR uh, and uh, uh, um, Jonas Mugabe from FARA. Uh, uh, Stefan will uh, uh, present the, the uh, uh, approach uh, and uh, uh, the PMC model uh, and uh, uh, its potential implication uh, in uh, uh, building the platform. And uh, uh, Jonas, uh, we present uh, uh, the uh, ERC approach uh, to manage in the medium uh, term the, the platform uh, once uh, the platform itself will be built. So uh, I leave the floor to, uh, to, to Stefan. Thank you very much. Allow me also to share my screen. Okay, there it is. Let me just open this here. So, can you all see my screen? <clears throat> we can. Wonderful. Can you also see this laser pointer here? Yeah. You, you, you can put the, in uh, presentation mode. I did, okay. Good, perfect. Okay, do you see this laser pointer here? Yes. Oh, wonderful, perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, uh, a warm welcome here uh, from Bonn. My name is Stefan Hafner. I'm working for the German Aerospace Center, serving the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. Um, the program and innovation management cycle short the PIMC model um, and its potential implications for the AUEU platform for R&I on FMSSA is my pleasure to present um, here today. Um, we, this is uh, the Working Group Actors, Alliances and Policies, work for the co-design of the long-term vision and infrastructure of the AUEU platform for research and innovation on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. As Marta already in the beginning uh, rightfully said, the pre-IMC model, the program and innovation management cycle model is a meta governance model. It is not the platform. And I think this clarification is indeed uh, important to understand uh, from which angle we come uh, towards the platform that we want. So form follows function is a principle coming from architecture and design and at the end of um, our all doing, we would need a need oriented and a flexible and an inclusive coordination infrastructure, though the question is first, which functions do we have in mind for the future platform. And uh, you see here on the right side, the four functions of the program and innovation management cycle model, which is prioritization, investment, valorization, and application. And this model should be driven by a mechanism that we call sorting house mechanism. And I come later to that, uh, what this in detail means. So um, the prioritization phase, and I, I just briefly explain this model for you, um, is about, um, identifying uh, common goals, identifying knowledge gaps. And uh, for that, uh, the, the main instrument, um, which has been uh, applied in LEAP Agri, as well uh, as the, uh, the model here, uh, found its first draft uh, in the LEAP Agri uh, project. Um, the theory of change and impact pathway instrument is uh, the instrument with which uh, the program and innovation management cycle, uh, a cycle should start. And I briefly explain to you what it is. And the theory of change and impact pathway, first, uh, you need to develop a situation analysis. Um, following from, from, uh, from this situation analysis here in, in this pinkish color, um, one has to define goals. Well, what, what is the way ahead? Where do, where do we want to end with our uh, ambitions? And for that, roadmaps will have to be developed. This is the second step in the TCIP um, development. These roadmaps consist of agendas for research and innovation and capacity building. And um, there also the desired outputs and the outcomes and the impacts will have to be defined um, uh, from those uh, roadmaps. And these are the impact pathways. 
Um, a very important element then, once a TCIP has been um, designed and it has been also adopted in particular by funders, um, is to develop a monitoring and evaluation and learning concept. Because um, this is indeed uh, the, the, the driving activity of a whole cycle to make it uh, a cycle of learning and a cycle of an efficient collaboration. Also here briefly, what is in a TCIP, just that you get an idea. The TCIP is a, is a document at the end. And at the beginning in the situation analysis, you might start this with a SWOT analysis. Uh, this has been done uh, currently in um, the Union for the Mediterranean uh, region. There are also three TCIPs have been developed. They started there with a SWOT analysis and you can see it's a kind of flexible instrument, but also there are some uh, very basic elements which are required for this instrument. So a SWOT analysis is possible. You have to describe problems and their underlying causes in the situation analysis. And you have to describe also the context and which stakeholders are involved. Once this has been finalized, um, you start with uh, developing the roadmaps. What is a roadmap? There uh, it is described uh, which are the specific challenge in this roadmap, and there can be many roadmaps in a, in a TCIP. What is the SDG reference? How does these activities or how does this problem also refer to the SDGs has to be described. And then the research and innovation agendas have to be drafted. Uh, including the desired impact pathways, and they are um, kept here in, in this greenish, um, in, in, in color green. Furthermore, in a TCIP, you will find also a capacity uh, building agenda. And this means that uh, the capacities required for researchers, entrepreneurs, NGOs, and policy officers will have to be described in that way which possible capacity building activities and formats are required and what is the desired output outcomes and impact for each of them. Of course, this is also flexible. You might want to choose uh, also other stakeholders categories here, but just to keep you informed, what is a theory of change and impact pathway? It's a very important element of the program and innovation management cycle because this will accompany the whole cycle process towards um, a learning at the end of one cycle. The investment phase, the second phase here in blue, um, is about the dialogues for action. What does that mean? It's the dialogue uh, between the funders uh, and other stakeholders um, about where to invest in the best way uh, for the best uh, outputs and outcomes and impacts. So in this phase, uh, once a TCIP, a theory of change and impact pathway has been adopted, um, decisions will be made for funding research and innovation and capacity building activities and projects will be conducted and at the end you will have some output. This is all in phase number two called investment in the program and innovation management cycle model. And the following phase then called here valorization, it is all about translating the research output um, into recommendations uh, for the practice and how to communicate that. And this is um, another peak, so to say, of the work of the Sorting House Network. The Sorting House Network is um, uh, are those experts, those stakeholders, and not only researchers, but also from other uh, sectors who are working together in a network um, towards um, research uptake um, and uh, the implementation of research output. And we call this the sorting house mechanism. It plays a role in the first phase for the prioritization where knowledge is needed to design the TCIP. In the third phase it is needed to analyze research output and to uh, communicate with stakeholders. In the fourth phase called application, um, it is closely linked to the third phase. It is about the dialogue between um, experts and end users of knowledge. And um, we are in particular thinking about here circular communication, which means that, of course, the end users of knowledge uh, have valuable questions for the researchers so that their research is meaningful and the other way around researchers 
um, have good ideas to support uh, practitioners. So this is roughly the idea of the program and innovation management cycle model. And you see here um, on the left side, um, again, uh, just symbolized with this blue circle here, this is the monitoring and evaluation and learning process which accompanies uh, one cycle um, until its end where a proper impact analysis uh, would be possible. So the message or the promise of the program and innovation management cycle model, a meta governance model, is learning and efficiency through cyclic programming. And um, it is symbolized here with this spiral. Um, just to, uh, I want to explain it to you. If you follow here the spiral in one circle, you, 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 you closed one program and innovation management cycle. And the idea is um, after you uh, concluded with one uh, PIMC, you learned something, you gained knowledge, you gained trust between the stakeholders so that uh, thereafter a new PIMC um, is envisaged, a new TCIP will have to be uh, developed so that um, the long-term vision of the PIMC model, the meta governance model is to uh, organize a succession of coordinated cycles. And in that sense, this meta governance model serves the development of the platforms coordination infrastructure of the platform that we want. So the question then is, these were the functions, what is the form? So which form, which infrastructure elements can be deduced from the PIMC model? First of all, we have to uh, recognize we have four main fields of coordination, or at least we identified them so far in the Leap5 and SSA project. The funders require coordination. The whole expertise in the sorting house network, the different stakeholders who would have to communicate there with each other, to work with each other, need, co need coordination. We have or we have to establish interfaces for knowledge management, but also for data management. And we have to clearly distinguish between both, between data information and knowledge management. And last but not least, uh, the whole sector of communication between all those stakeholders has to be coordinated. So these four main fields of coordinations are relevant, have to be considered if we continue deducing from the meta governance model PIMC, uh, the platform that we want. We did that. We identified according to um, the program and innovation management cycle, 15 services that are required in each of the four phases of the PIMC. Um, we will not go into the details here today. Um, we have, uh, we would have even several slides to demonstrate this year, but the time doesn't uh, allow that. But please be aware, this is how we are about um, to feed the coming platform from this angle. Another remark here, and, and just to make this clear, Marta already mentioned this also uh, at the beginning, the knowledge management and communication framework, what is that? This is not a digital portal. It is the total of all the activities, all the methods, all the technology that is used to keep uh, this network of actors running. So a lot of knowledge has to be shared and communicated and uh, a lot of information has to flow from A to B, be it from decision makers to end users or from end users um, to decision makers. So this is the knowledge management and communication framework and this, as you might imagine now, consists of several elements. The theory of the PIMC is that it is a beautiful cycle. It starts at one day and uh, it takes roughly 10 years and then you come to an end and you have a lovely um, impact analysis. The reality is absolutely chaotic because there are many activities uh, ongoing and therefore we underline uh, from actors, alliances and policies that we have to think more into the direction of diversity management. What is diversity management? Which agility is needed to build a platform so that we are not static and perhaps even useless because nobody needs a platform that somebody thought about in an ivory tower but never communicated uh, with end users of such a platform. Therefore, we are active. Yeah. Uh, we are active uh, to uh, facilitate- but, but have just one minute to finish. Excuse me? You have just one minute to finish just to leave also I mean, Jonas, I mean, okay, time. okay, sorry. So we are active in the West Africa, um, EU, uh, North Africa, EU alliance in different uh, working groups. 
Um, we are working there on the theory of change and the impact pathway for both regions on communication concepts and also on the collaboration of data and knowledge managers. Um, and you see here, it's a big diversity that we are addressing. We have already some ideas how to coordinate this big diversity in different uh, geographical levels in sorting house hubs. Um, the plan is that uh, at uh, the end of next year, we will have a big conference in which we present these contributions to the platform that we want. You can contact us if, in case you want to um, participate in these working groups. Please make a screenshot of this slide. And um, for uh, at the end, I would like to make this then very clear here. You have on the left side, the program and innovation management cycle. This is the meta governance model we work on. The platform's process is uh, described here in this spiral. So each uh, program, each cycle uh, that we work together will enrich the whole community. Um, so the next milestone is the IRC. And Jonas, my colleague from FARA, will present you the IRC. It is meant as a five years project to have a next step. It is a milestone towards the platform. Uh, however, we will call this platform, be it IRC or however, but these are is the relation between the meta governance model, the services that we suggest to deduce from the PIMC model, and the next milestone, as I said, is the IRC. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, uh, Stefan. I thank you also, Gaetano, for introducing this session because while I was uh, okay busy with another another problem to solve. So uh, now, uh, well, thank you, Stefan, first, and just because you have just given, I mean, uh, uh, an, an overview of what, okay, is the, the meaning and the prospect of the long-standing and long-term uh, cooperation uh, through the PMC model. Uh, I will give the floor now to Jonas. Uh, I, Jonas will go more into maybe the, uh, the, 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 the activities, the services which could be uh, provided that I really prompt the participants, all the participants while presenting this, uh, the platform and the services go into the, the chat or go to the, sorry, to the uh, question and answer Okay, in order that I mean uh, you can also be active uh, uh, in a, in in this meeting. Uh, Jonas Mugabe is working at FARA, uh, the Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa. is a lead specialist for research policy and investments. Uh, is a manager of the platform at the Pipeward. Very, uh, very, very intense activities in this platform, okay? And his background is uh, in uh, uh, agriculture and he has a PhD in agriculture economics. So the honest, the floor is your, you have 10 minutes, please make the most of these 10 minutes as to your best convenience. Thank you very much, uh, Claudio and uh, good morning to everyone. So I'm not going to read the long title I have been asked to talk about. Uh, let me move uh, to the outline. The presentation is structured into six points that you can read from the screen. We are going to talk about the IRC between AU, EU, R and I, partnership, what is an IRC criteria of IRC serves, and also approach to build the, the IRC and sustainability of an IRC. Most of these points have been touched by one or another uh, presenter that have presented before me, including also Mata who talked uh, about, about this Yeah, why an IRC in AU EU research and innovation partnerships? 
First of all, it is a contract agreement obligation that we have to fulfill as a project, as a consortium, we have accepted to establish a sustainable structure or platform for the efficient and coherent implementation of EU AU research and innovation partnerships as described in the roadmap. So we have to fulfill this obligation. Two, the platform will be a long term knowledge management, communication, and governance mechanism, which may be inspired by the KRMC framework proposed by LIP for FNSSA and could take the form of international research and consortium. I think these words were also pronounced by Mata. The structure of an IRC seems to be simple. She said it again, flexible, which can be adaptable according to the change in the partnership. So that's the reason why we are thinking about an IRC. So what an IRC is, it is a group of committed institutions, including research and innovation institutions. I think we talked about inclusiveness when Gaetan was making a presentation, this was the most word that came, inclusiveness, meaning we have to take the different institutions, not only research, but also the part of innovation, meaning farmers, private sector, public and uh, private institutions. So those institutions agree formally through MOU, through another form of arrangement to work towards common, common defined, defined goal. And also under a shared governance mechanism, implementing activities commonly agreed. I think uh, most of, uh, I think uh, Melissa talked also about democracy, demo democratic uh, platform. So you have to agree together in common and supported by resources put at the disposal of the IRC by these institutions, but also maybe from other sources. Of course, an IRC has to source out funds to be sustainable as we are going to see it in the last slide of present this presentation. So what are the criteria of the IRC on FNSSA between EU AU? I think this word has become also, it has become common for us by continental. It has to unite Europe and Africa for the benefit of both continents. It has to be operational, something which can be operationalized, implementing and supporting R and I activities through information, through opportunities, join forces, share evidence and coordinate efforts with other stakeholders and other initiatives and through access to funding while also staying connected to the EU AU policy dialogue. So it has to be uh, connected to know what is happening in the cycle of EU AU uh, partnership. Yeah, it has also the another criteria of course is inclusive, open to all institutions, public, private, from Europe and Africa. This one, I think we have talked about it many times. What are expected services or benefit to be provided by the IRC? When we made the first side event during the Farah General Assembly last year, participants were asking what are the benefits they should have, they will have once they join this platform. So one of course is to increase the impact of your initiative. If you are working in a separate project, coming together, with other initiatives, 
will create synergies with other institutional alliances and clusters of projects to which the IRC would give you access. It will also optimize the utilization of your work uh, and results. It will also allow access to a knowledge base and learning environment, including monitoring and evaluation activities. I think all of you, you have talked about learning environment. This platform has really to facilitate that learning environment. Yeah, access to funding programs and opportunities. Uh, if you take the platform like uh, uh, PyPad, it has been really uh, disseminating information about funding opportunities. And I think this one also should go in deep, uh, do intelligence gathering and share different opportunities that uh, can help to enhance the food nutrition security between Africa and Europe. And also gain greater recognition and visibility for your contribution to success of EU-AU partnerships supported by highest authorities and participate in the governance of the platform and accommodate areas of priorities that you find most relevant to the partnership. Yeah, uh, I think Melissa talked about the governance, the democratic governance. So uh, if you are part of this platform, you are also uh, entitled to become, to go in the governance and maybe pass your ideas, what you want to pass, your priorities, what you want to do. So it is, this one gives that opportunity. So, uh, approach of leap for FNSSA to build the IRC. Yeah, this one, it is also, you know, much discussable, it is discussable. We can discuss, it is not a kind of exact science. It is do, try and do. <clears throat> First of all, the bicontinental platform is the form of an international research consortium. We need to agree on that one. Two, the stakeholders will be engaged from the design stage instead of waiting for the platform launch. I think this one came uh, both from Melissa and Noran that we shouldn't wait the last stage to engage the uh, potential partners. We have to engage them since the beginning of the design of this IRC. And that's what we are doing currently by disseminating this information, inviting people who are not part of LIP for FNSSA project to come and give their ideas, contribute in the reflection on the building of this partnership. So the program and innovation management cycle, which uh, Stefan has just talked about it and Matt also mentioned it, is being piloted during the design phase of the platform as a process for dialogue and coordination. Uh, I think uh, West Africa and Northern Africa has been chosen as pilot regions where we are engaging more uh, stakeholders using this PIMC uh, model. Specific efforts will be made to ensure that African institutions are equally participating and have, have built strategies to mobilize domestic resources in order to avoid asymmetric partnership between Europe and Africa with FARA playing a key role. I think uh, during the stakeholder engagement, people also expressed the will that this partnership should be a balanced partnership between Africa and Europe. So once we are mobilizing uh, our the different institutions, we should make sure that African institutions are equally uh, presented 
represented in this platform so that it is a kind of balance uh, partnership, balance platform between African and European institutions. And also be pragmatic, look for what is feasible and in the allocated time. This could mean to launch the platform initially with a limited group of institutions representing the various stakeholder categories in Europe and in Africa, and then expand from there as the IRC platform develops its activities. So we shouldn't wait maybe 100 or 200 institutions. We should start with a cell of institutions that from which we are going to expand the IRC. You have two uh, minutes, uh, Jonas. Yeah, too much even. In one <laughs> minute, I'm done. Yeah, commitments about the sus sustainability of the ERC. It is first of all, it will depend on commitment of the funders, founders of the EIRC to work together as a consortium to support EU, AU roadmap on FNSSA. Two, founder institutions commit resources to support the IRC. We know that without resources, something like a platform will not work. We have done 10 years of PIPAD. We realized that you can create the platform, they can come together, but without resources, it will not be sustainable. So we need to have a strategy of mobilizing resources to support the IRC. Three, the EU, AU, FNSA roadmap remains one of the priorities of collaboration. And this one, we have, we, we got the assurance from Mata that it is still the priority. Uh, she talked about also the climate change, but that one doesn't uh, mean that the priority has, shift, has shifted from uh, FNSSA to on climate change. And we need also to go beyond 2026 after, after the current roadmap. The buy-in of funders of EU-AU collaboration between uh, the two continents. So we need to bring people and funders most to interest them to get their buy-in to support this uh, partnership. And also the last one, IRC should demonstrate the value added in supporting the HLPD. So what is the value added with the IRC in this dialogue that is going on between Africa and Europe? If we don't demonstrate that value added, then the IRC is not relevant to this dialogue. But I think it will be relevant. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jonas. And uh, well, let me add a few things. Well, I, I take home, I take home four keywords. Equal footing, balanced partnership, the need of resources, financial one, but human as well. And you respond to the needs of the FNSSA. I think uh, these four um, uh, keywords I take home, I mean, uh, are, in, in my opinion, essential, important, A equal footing first. Uh, I, I've seen. I've seen that. I mean, in the uh, answer and question, question and answer, there is some uh, uh, some some movement. Uh, Ignazio from Cesal is asking whether I mean an NGO water in specializing in water irrigation. I mean, could uh, be an actor here. Of course, it is an actor. You are already an actor, as I understood. In Africa, you mentioned Mozambique, and I, I'm sure that you are, and you will continue to be an actor. So within 
the platform. Uh, I see there are other questions. Uh, for example, uh, Frederick Ayla has just addressed to Stefan asking, I mean, some more, uh, something more detail about the follow and function in your the present in the presentation i don't know if stefan you want to add something but 30 seconds not more than that <laughs> thank you very much form follows function is a design principle and uh, the starting point is to ask which functions do we need what are the needs before we think about which form do we give it so um in a, a project design it is better to look what what functions do we need instead of having a nice project in mind which might not be needed so against a top-down approach form follows function means ask the stakeholders what they need, and then we find a format to support them. Thank you, Stefan. There is another question, which is really very simple. Take it, take an interest question. It's not in the question and answer, but was in the, in the chat. It's about how people could be, uh, could forward or suggest research ideas that can be founded. I don't know if, Jonas, you want to com comment on this. Uh, Carl, uh, uh, sorry, Claudio, I didn't get the question. The question, the question is uh, how to come uh, up or to suggest the research ideas that can be founded. Uh, do you have any, any comment on that? Uh, I, 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 di I didn't really get the question very well, but uh, I think this, uh, this platform will be discussing some, some priorities, some themes of research, and, and then uh, suggest also the mechanisms of uh, of funding, whether it will go through uh, competition or commissioned, uh, I'm not sure I got the question. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, I think I think the question is whether I mean uh, through the platform, I mean uh, it will be possible to put forward ideas yeah. for research to be funded. I guess yeah. I guess that I yeah. mean, it will be possible. Yeah, yeah it I, is possible. It is possible. So, yeah, it will be possible. Yeah. And that's what that's we, said. we said. One yes, of the sure. benefits is to pass your idea. What do you want? If you are in the governance of that platform, if you are a member of that platform, you can still advance what, what you want, your idea, and your, your sure. priorities, for example. Sure. Sure. Yeah. That that's that's why I mean we try we try to we organize this this meeting in order to 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 disseminate and communicate as much as possible. I mean uh, the, the 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 platform uh, the platform should serve should serve for this. There is another question which is similar to the previous one from uh, Leon Chizungu uh, is uh, asking. I mean if uh, the if they can. Uh, be the beneficiary, okay, for of a research project on the water resources, okay, in a, in a, in a, in East Africa. I mean, uh, yes, of course, not in East Africa, but uh, in the, uh, the in the Republic, Republic of, of in the Republic of Congo, in East, eastern of Congo. Yes, sure, yeah, Congo. of course, of course, yeah. sure. I mean. As, as it has been said before by Jonas, uh, this platform should really try to, in, first of all, understanding what the needs are, uh, collecting questions, collecting demands, and see how to convey all these needs and demands, okay, in the best possible way to the funding agencies and to those actors who are interested in supporting, financially support activities and cooperation in Africa. Well, uh, I think, I mean, uh, please, uh, 
to the participant go on with uh, questions and uh, because uh, i mean you will be answer and uh, if you have specific questions uh, different than the ones i mean uh, uh, we have received now uh, and uh, we will be pleased to to give you to give you a, a reaction uh, when uh, when possible if possible like just give the floor now back to either Gaetano or Nora. I see Nora. She is okay. The the uh, the facilitator of the next uh, session. Uh, I see that. I mean, the number of participants has uh, all of a sudden increased in just during the presentation of the PMC model and the Iris platform. I'm happy about this because I mean it means that I mean. The interest is very focused on the platforms today, and uh, I give the floor to Nora and Gaetano. No, no. I thank, Nora, I thank, I thank Jonas and Stefan for the contribution. So we are now entering in the panel debate. Uh, the panel debate will be chaired by uh, Nora. Uh, we will thank uh, all the panelists. Uh, uh, that are attending this event. And so um, I give the floor to Noren to guide this uh, uh, very important uh, uh, session. Please, Noren. Yes, thank you, Gaetano, and thank you, Claudio. Um, and hi, everyone, again. Uh, this panel discussion would be on the challenges and opportunities in Africa. And it is based on the outcomes of the second raising awareness event and the open consultation. Uh, generally, the panelists will be asked to express their opinion on STI systems in Africa um, and uh, the, um, how can the AU EU IRC platform for research and innovation on FNSA could meet the stakeholders' needs. Uh, but please, before we start the panel, I would like to welcome all our panelists and uh, I would like to give a short introduction on each of them. Uh, so, first we have um, just one second. We have uh, Henning Nipschild from BLE uh, Germany. Uh, he's a biologist by training with expertise on funding, research management, international policies, knowledge management and development cooperation. And he works in the Federal Office for Agriculture and Food, BLE in Germany. We also have uh, Prudence Makari from <coughs> Makura, sorry, from NRF in South Africa. She's the Director for International Partnerships and Collaborations at the National Research Foundation of South Africa. And in this capacity, she is responsible for managing bilateral and multilateral partnerships with Europe, Asia, Americas, and the Middle East through funding collaborative research and human capacity development in all strategic areas of importance. We also have Eric Mwangi from DRST Kenya uh, he's a research scientist and policy advisor. He holds a PhD in veterinary medicine from the University of Glasgow, and uh, he has published widely in scientific journals. His current portfolio includes implementing the MESD's international cooperation agenda, which includes the development of policy and strate strate strategies, including research and innovation promotion. We also have uh, Mary Obodai uh, from CSIR in Ghana. Uh, she holds a PhD in food science from the University of Nottingham, UK, and she's the immediate past director of the CSIR Food Research Institute and an associate professor at the CSIR College of Science and Technology. She, ha she has over 26, sorry, 28 years experience in research and development. She has coordinated and implemented a number of projects and co-authored and authored several publications. We also have um, Alaya Otiyami, and he's a researcher from West Africa, specialized in plant breeding and seed production. Um, he's an agronomist environmentalist, and he was nominated on International Earth Day by USAID Independent Consultant, Idea Carrier, and CEO and founder of the ART Lab, a West African Lab for Plant Breeding and Seed Production in Benin, Burkina Faso, and Ivory Coast, and a member of the Global Alliance for Climate Smart Agriculture. We also have today uh, Claude Savadogu uh, from Bioprotect in Burkina Faso. He, is, he holds a master's degree in economic and financial engineering. Um, and um, 
He is also uh, has another one in the agri-food business strategy from the University of Montpellier, and he's the managing director and co-founder of BioProtect B and BioProtect Sari. Um, he's a member of the Africa Europe Platform for Agriculture Research and Development, and a member of the Executive Board of National Council of Organic Agriculture in Burkina Faso. And last but not least, we have uh, Hamidou Tambura from Founded Burkina Faso. Um, he's a senior animal science scientist at the um, Scientific and Technology Research Center in Burkina Faso, and um, where he joined in 1985, serving at the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research and Innovation. He coordinated several national and international projects, uh, including CORAF, WICARD, uh, INCODEV, and others. Um, and he actively participated in the building the NARS and he's involved in ERA Africa and Leap Agri Joint EU Africa projects. So welcome everyone and welcome especially to the panelists. Thank you. Session. And I would like to start uh, by directing my question to Henning. Um, so I just want to ask you about your opinion on which interventions you think need to be adopted in the field of FNSSA in order to overcome the challenges and how can we create an integrated partnership that could be a game changer? And also in respect to the mentioned platform, um, in your opinion, how could the funding remain sustained in the FNSSA project and how we can catalyze the involvement of funders in such an initiative? So please, Henning, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I have a question. Are you expecting now that I just really answer or that I go to a presentation? Um, I think it's your preference. If you would like to share your screen, it's fine. Okay. Um, maybe I just start freely with your with my answers because I think one of the issues we have in FNSSA because it's a very specific uh, area of research is that we have uh, difficult access to the target groups. Our target groups are uh, entrepreneurs. Our target groups are farmers, and their policy makers at local levels. So I think we have to do make a quite big effort to get into contact with these people in order to actually identify the demand for research. And only by this, we can put research into the position where we need it within the uh, knowledge-based society. So I think we have to do work on that. And as a funder, I can see, I think we, uh, have to identify modes in research funding to fund these kind of services, the brokers, which were men actually mentioned in the previous presentations. And uh, the second point you said, how can we actually uh, uh, extend the, the joint funding for FNSSA? And here, I think we have to find very flexible cyclic modes where people can join at any time. We have had quite uh, some experience in the field of joint funding, centralized funding, and we uh, encountered quite a number of problems with regards to different administrative rules at national level also, and so on. So we, we are looking actually for new modes here, and that's where we're looking for modes of joint coordination and the, the development of a program management. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Henning, so much. Um, and I think when, we, when we're also discussing the different modes of funding, we can direct the next question to Prudence. And um, I have a question for you based on your experience working with different stakeholders uh, specifically in the project in North and West Africa. Uh, what uh, did you find as critical factors for creating the enabling environment for FNSSA? And also from a funder's perspective, um, how do you envisage the FNSSA and I platform? And what do you think the, the services that could be offered in order to attract the funders to be part of such a platform? Please, Prudence, the floor is yours. Um, 
Um, can, you, can you please raise your voice a little bit? So try to get, can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Noham. So um, working with um, colleagues from West Africa and from North Africa, some of the issues that have came out as uh, critical factors for creating such an enabling collaborative environment has been issues of um, ensuring diversity within this uh, partnership, ensuring that the partners that are involved, the different stakeholders that are involved are all equally involved. Um, because um, there's always been this issue of not having all stakeholders being um, equally engaged. And the other issues that have been raised are the issues around um, cross-sector. Uh, learning and the exchange of knowledge, um, issues that touches on um, easy and accessible um, modalities to access the information. And I think, especially from the West Africa side, some of the issues that have been um, raised is to ensure that when we establish such a platform, um, that there is co-creation between different stakeholders that, you know, we do not um, work on, on the platform, define it, conceptualize it, and get the stakeholders, the different stakeholders involved at the tail end. So the idea is to work together right from the beginning and uh, develop the platform together as, as partners. And um, sustainability has always been an issue that cut across the different stakeholders that um, we've actually engaged and sustainability in terms of change, in terms of impact, in terms of engaged science, you know, and the argument has always been that even the priorities that are identified within the platform have to be driven from the end user's perspective. And lastly, I think um, the issue of resources has been mentioned a lot. Um, ensuring appropriate resource, resources and um, incentive um, systems uh, within the platform. But as for me, as a, as a funder, there are also a number of um, issues that I would like such an ideal platform to, you know, to address. But central uh, to all these issues for me is actually uh, coherence, it's ensuring, it's ensuring coherence, ensuring that, ensuring that we have a network of different uh, partnerships. We really work hard at harmonizing our efforts, harmonizing our actions, and forming a unified whole. You know? So also consistency also is a very important um, issue um, if you are a funder, and inclusivity is also very important. But I think also something that we tend to forget is that already we know the platform is um, intercontinental, which is beautiful. But we should not forget um, regional challenges, national challenges, and challenges at the local level. So we should ensure that this platform addresses challenges at different levels. Um, I think I'll leave it at that for now. Yes, thank you, Prudence, for this uh, perspective. I think now we can um, have a point of view uh, from the decision maker compared to the funders. So I ask um, Eric Mwangi. Um, so the good policy is a key to developing the agri-food sector. And uh, we would like to discuss with you the, um, the gaps in the development and implementation of policies and in your opinion, what are the institutional arrangements um, and how we can engage different actors that could help bridge the, these gaps and develop um, the um, platform that we are discussing? Please, Eric, go ahead. So, uh, Eric, you're muted. We cannot hear you. So sorry. I'm uh, so thank you very much. And of course, first of all, I appreciate the this presentation were excellent. All the slides were very good. And, and uh, of course, it's very clear about this roadmap. It's coming very clear. I think the vision is there. So the, the first thing I would like to talk about is about a uh, priority setting. If you don't have your priorities in the policy, you go nowhere. 
And actually, the first thing you need to do, I saw this have been defined in various presentations, is the priorities must be identified with the we want FNSSA and funding parties who, who don't have defined priorities will not be able to join in, 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 the, in, the, in the platform efficiently. So that's the first issue. And then the frameworks, yeah? The priorities can be identified. You can have an STI policy, but it's just put in the shelf. There is no framework to implement. And for instance, I, I want to mention, you, you find like South Africa, okay, yeah, there's a national research fund. We have an innovation agency. We have a policy making body. We have the national council. Uh, we, we, so we, you, you need to have these uh, organizations to implement. And of course, I've talked about the, uh, the priority setting. And the other part, although we are talking about food nutrition and security, you have other closely related ministries which are involved. The treasury gives the funding. If you look at other water irrigation, they are all intertwined. So th there is also the concepts, concept of looking at science based innovation broadly. So we have the food nutrition roadmap, but you look at other anchoring, anchoring supporting, a, anchoring supporting a policies and instruments and, and ministries. And I think I've talked, then the other, the other, the other issue would come in on policy is that most African countries and not even European countries don't have a, a, a strong a, a priority on the partnership, EAU partnerships. And in fact, when you've got for many uh, African EU, AU meetings in Addis uh, or even in Brussels, you find very few countries. So actually that's the first challenge you need to, how many of the African countries committed to the partnership? Yeah, that's the main challenge I would see. Uh, and that needs to be addressed in the, in the, in the presentation that came here. That how you mobilize a few countries now, you mobilize a few partners, but how are you going to make it inclusive? Uh, how many uh, how many African countries are in FNSC? How many European, and how many countries when we made the call? How many countries do you have in Africa? So that mobilization to about the EU AU partnership, it's very very important even for the European countries. Then I had uh, the other final one, which is I talked about the the the, the, the participation in the partnership. And also the understanding of the FNCC. Do all the partners understand the FNCC? Do they understand the EU AU roadmap? So there are some basic questions that needs to be thought about. And finally, the other thing to comment on the kick of the partnership, it should actually, as, as was one presenter said, start as soon as possible. It shouldn't wait. The, thinking about the partnership should not start in the last phases of the project. It should start very early, actually. Uh, I think uh, uh, the, the, the policy issues engaging members, I think I would like to stop there and I can clarify uh, anything else I may have missed out. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much, Eric. Um, I think uh, you three have mentioned the same things somehow and how the resources are important and how to co-create this platform and ensure the balance between uh, the African and European countries and how uh, this could be a game changer. And um, I think we can also take the opinion of uh, Mari uh, Obodai as representative for the research and innovation sector. And I would like to ask you um, about the current challenges that you think are facing the R&I and in the FNSSA sector in Africa and uh, what are the most important needed adjust adjustments to the STI system that can help overcome these challenges and how the R&I can shape this IRC platform that we are discussing. Please, Mary, go ahead. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, um, Nora. Thank you the, for the opportunity to be part of this panel. Um, I think most of the ideas I have has been already um, spelled out by my earlier panelists. But just to say that um, STI, as we all know, is a critical driver for socioeconomic development. And it is key, the key means of implementing the SDGs. The levels in which the SDI system in Africa, there are different levels for different countries. Some policies are being reviewed to line up with addressing the SDGs, while others are actually implementing it. So there are various um, dimensions that you can look at there. Um, how STI is, um, is being addressed. And 
for the for the platform, it is key. Like I said earlier, it's already been taught about the, the co-design, the co-creation concepts that needs to be engaged right from the beginning. So then there is the involvement of all stakeholders. And so when it takes off, its um, implementation is addressed by all and everyone is part of it being done. So that is very key. And we're also um, looking at the, um, how this is, um, the IRC will strengthen the technical competence of stakeholders. It will broader make give a broader stakeholder engagement with better networking, and it would also achieve inclusiveness for better adoption of end users, which I said earlier. So um, the STI capacity building is through this bilateral multilateral engagements, which is key to its implementation. So I, I see it as um, something that this IRC will, would um, in various ways help in addressing some of these challenges. The, the issue is that there's a lot of overlapping research. And so with a, a platform of this nature, um, ideas are brought forth, there are different stakeholders, there are different perspectives taken from different people, and it helps to unify um, the, the concept and also helps areas that have been helped by, um, the, that has worked in other countries also to be made bare in, um, in other areas or in other countries. And so it's not a repetition of things, but what has worked, how it's been implemented, how we can adopt it to our country and our parameters, and then um, move forward in ensuring its success. So th these are the small, these are the few points that I have, uh, because most of the points I had um, have already been addressed. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. No, thank you, Mary, so much. Um, I think that we're all on the same page, and since, since you said that most of the points are already common between all the speakers, I think this is a good start, um, that we're all um, expecting the same from this uh, proposed platform. And hopefully this could um, decrease the overlapping in the research, like you mentioned, and uh, like you and Prudence also mentioned that we should focus on the national scales as well, from the global scale to the national scale and how this could work out. So um, I would like to move to Alai Otiami, uh, which is representing the farmers, entrepreneurs and their organizations. And I would like to ask you, um, how can the, how can the and, reconstruction and reconstruction of the African, of the African the STI, or STI pave the way towards reaching sustainability and overcoming challenges. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to thank you to give me this uh, opportunity to talking uh, about uh, uh, science, technology, innovation system, and my position in West Africa. So in the first step, I represent the main challenges or opportunities of science, technology, innovation system in Africa. So among the challenges and opportunities facing the science, technology, and innovation system in Africa is a transformation of Africa's traditional food system to a sustainable food system in a context marked by climate change, poverty, hunger, and the health of agro-ecosystem, animals, and humans. So indeed, the COVID-19 pandemic and climate change have revealed the fragility of African food system Thus, the reconstruction of African food system through science, technology, and innovation will transform the way Africa produces and consumes its food by advancing the 17 sustainable development goals. To this end, we need to produce healthier, safer, and more nutritious food on less land using less water and chemicals and producing less waste and less greenhouse gases in growing in the essential of a better future of food system in Africa. So this transformation of food system in Africa will make it possible to better operationalize the first pillar or area 
of the African Union Science, Technology, and Innovation Strategies, which is eradicate hunger and achieve food security. So I'd like to uh, I'd like adding to the previously uh, following sentences. This is food and agricultural system are subjects to the constraints of a growing population under prison natural resources, the challenge of climate variability and change, and the complex requirements of inside nutrition and food security and food safety in the global economy. So meeting this challenge requires science, technology, and innovation for a sustainable agriculture and food nutrition security. So what are your, my expectation needs to be addressed by AU and UE IC platform for research innovation on FNCC. Among the needs to be addressed is the AU EU IRC platform for research innovation on uh, FNCC. There is the first the visibility of young innovators and startup of the LEP for FNCC project on the AU UE IRC platform for research innovation on FNCC. Then their involvement in the design planning, execution, and monitoring and evaluation of all national or regional projects and program research and innovation on food security, nutrition, and sustainable agriculture. Then the AU EU RC platform for research and innovation on FNCC must help implement the projects of young innovators selected by LEP for FNCC trial financial support from the European Union and technical support from all stakeholders involved in their research and innovation projects. So this is, will make it possible to enhance the technical support of the various stakeholders to consolidate them and mobilize them the realization of the project of a young innovation and startup. Indeed, the project selected by LEP for FNC consider major force for the real transformation of food system in Africa. Because the project selected by LEP for FNC cover areas related to the agricultural transition of food system, digitations, and short value chain. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, and we do agree that um, young entrepreneurs and innovators are key in order to transform the, um, the food system in Africa. And uh, I would also like to ask uh, Claude Savado, who now also representing the um, farmers and entrepreneurs, um, uh, uh, tell us his opinion uh, on. Um, Maram, sorry, sorry. Yes. Uh, Claude uh, Savado is not here, and uh, mm -hmm. nor uh, Mr. Tambura. So uh, they are sending a, a justification. So they are not here. Oh, okay, so unfortunately, the rest of the panelists are not here, uh, but I think we can go back to uh, our discussions. Now we have representatives from the funders group and uh, decision makers and uh, research and innovation and also uh, entrepreneurs. So I think we got somehow a brief um, idea on what, what uh, each group is expecting. Um, so maybe we can uh, take some questions. I can see some people are already starting to react. Yes, if I may want to move. Uh, you said two. No, sorry. So there are a number of uh, questions or there are some um, uh, information uh, I, I would like to, to remind to all the attendees that it is not uh, possible to interact uh, raising their hand. So if they have question, direct question for the panelists, they can uh, use the question and answer uh, tool. Um, so, uh, okay. okay, so uh, I think most of the people are sharing yeah, some information so, on uh, existing uh, webinars. Uh, is suggesting to uh, open a debate also on the uh, emergent technology, especially in the uh, sequencing and genome editing. Um, uh, that would be 
uh, a good uh, issue to be discussed. Um, so, let me have uh, one change. So, uh, Leon Shinzugu uh, um, in different uh, uh, messages send uh, uh, his ability to, to join the, the platform and to join as a center the research agroecologic uh, the Republic of Congo uh, to the to the project. Uh, other other question. Uh, so uh, there is a question about uh, project uh, research project on the impact of. Uh, chemicals on the environment, uh, but uh, okay, I, um, I guess that uh, uh, there are no uh, specific I think I have a general question I could, I could uh, ask to the panelists, the panelists. yeah, so because uh, most of them discussed question. also the difference between the global scale and the national capacities. Um, okay, uh, Hafsa Hilhori um, asked, how can LIP uh, for FNSSA help small scale farmers to improve their revenue. So I turn this question to all the panelists, asking them if uh, they think that uh, the uh, on building a platform can support uh, uh, this specific need and how. Yes, Henning, please. Um, I would say this is exactly the point I tried to raise before that uh, at a programmatic level where we bring together actors from research and FNSSA, we have to build mechanisms to actually uh, have a dynamic knowledge management with the producers. And this is really one of the big challenges we have to get out the recommendations from research to the producers, to the entrepreneurs, to um, to, to actually uh, support this kind of uh, productivity augmentation. And uh, this is where we actually try to show at the platform level that we have to identify first the proper actors who know the mechanisms, who use question answer service, who use uh, uh, rural innovation hubs, who do the work in that field, and how we integrate them into the platform and also identify appropriate funding for this at the research funding level. Thank you. Thank you, Henning. Um, Okay, I have another question, maybe to Prudence. Um, in your opinion, how do you think we can bridge this missing middle between the global scale and the national scale, and the capacities to overcome the challenges? No, Prudence, we cannot hear you. I don't know what the problem is. No, 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 we can hear it. Okay. Okay. I'll try to also speak very loud. Um, I think for me, it, it actually starts with um, analyzing the situation on the ground. For example, if we do a situational analysis and you analyze what is happening at national level and at regional level, because a lot is already taking place. There are already strategies and uh, policies that are already in place. And the idea is to see what are the current issues that are being addressed, where are the gaps, and try to align. Um, because the, for me, the, the most important impact uh, for this platform is to ensure that um, impact filters down, not only from a regional perspective, but also to an even an individual um, level. So I think if you if we were to do a thorough 
situational analysis and we were to identify the gaps at different levels, then you'll be able to put in place mechanisms that can, that can be able to respond to different challenges at different levels for different stakeholders. So for me, that, that issue is important and that's, that's the beginning point um, for me. Thank you, Prudence. Um, I also have a question for Ed. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, in the chat, there are some uh, uh, some point. Uh, one from uh, uh, Leon Chizungu. Uh, uh, he suggested uh, some domain of intervention for the platform uh, uh, in the specific agroecology and system uh, 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 food system, sustainable food system. Uh, the environment, uh, uh, the um, water uh, uh, protection, uh, water resource protection, and uh, uh, the dissemination of the research. Uh, so thank you, thank you, Leon, for the, those suggestions. And Sylvester uh, asked to all the panelists, uh, how can you prepare me or Yout in general as young researcher to reach you widely for a boost and open link to us for a bright future? So how to involve young researcher in the process? Okay. I think maybe we can direct this question to Mary. This yeah, is yeah. presenting the research and innovation. Okay, thank you. Nohan, yes. Yes. how can we get the young researcher on board? I think at the beginning, uh, it was made mention of the fact that um, we have different research institutions that are already part of um, this um, consortium. And so there's a need to broaden that, that scope. So um, not just the West African, we have the North African, we have um, the Europe. So we need to get more more institutions on board. And then this information needs to um, trickle down. It must be more disseminated, like it's being done now. There, there must be more popularity and there must be more um, engagement. That, that is what is happening now. So I think this is a very good platform where views are being um, given out as to how this IRC um, is gonna affect the young researcher. Like I said earlier, um, on the platform, you have different institutions with different uh, models of operation. So as a young researcher, when you come onto the platform, all these are available. You have, you have a better network. You even have the opportunity for mentoring. You have a better um, networking. And um, that in itself is an opportunity to help you um, develop in your area. Of, of research. So um, that, that is what I can say for now. So it, it, it involves the inclusiveness that I think has been stressed along all along our discussion. Thank yes, you. Thank you very much. So I, I just have one more question for Eric, please. Um, you mentioned how we could, but we need to mobilize the other African countries. Um, and I just want to know, in your opinion, how we can ensure um, that they are part of this platform and how can we um, raise the awareness on such an initiative and um, ensure that the, um, the consortium that we're trying to bring together uh, remains motivated somehow? Brad, I thank you very much. First of all, I want to state that uh, <clears throat> there's been a series of EU EU projects uh, uh, where the African countries have been involved and se several projects have been funded like from prisons from in Africa. We had initiatives uh, like Clip Agri. You, we had other initiatives. Uh, uh, so the, the database of the, of the people are known. The key actors in each of these countries if you look through the series of various EU, EU projects on science technology, the various actors in various countries are well known. And the, the, the key point now would, would try to aggressively 
uh, bring these key actors on board, the people who are aware about the partnership. And then we use the people who know about the uh, countries which know about the partnership to bring other, others on board. And uh, we, we try this at the regional economic levels where you could have one pilot country mobilizing the, the, the region. Uh, certainly South Africa has done very well for the Eastern uh, South, uh, South African region. Kenya has done this well for the East African region. I know uh, Ghana and other countries have done well. So now is to keep the momentum and make it more strong and uh, to be aware of this of this, uh, of this uh, roadmap uh, or the research uh, platform we are, we are putting on. But the most important thing, the selling point, which, which I, had, I would like to be extracted from the presentations what needs to come very strongly is about the benefits of this of this uh, platform. The benefits of this platform, that is a selling point. Because once the countries understand the benefits of this platform, they'll be able to join the platform. But more so, the, the benefits should not just focus on research. People should understand by having this platform or research innovation and food nutrition security, what are the benefits, one, in terms of economic benefits, benefits to agricultural trade. Uh, most African countries are agricultural based. So once these benefits are triggered to them very strongly, I saw a few benefits on the slides, a number of benefits on the slides, but you, the, you, you need to identify in your communication platform, which is a selling message, the benefits of this platform. And in that way, then you can have people, people joining the platform. That's what I would like to think on my side. Thank you. Um, Nora, sorry. Uh, I would like to, I, I really appreciate uh, this uh, huge interaction, uh, but uh, now we are going uh, uh, to the next step. And so uh, we need uh, to add uh, the last uh, piece on this puzzle. So to collect the needs and uh, in this view, I give the floor to Stefan. Uh, I would, um, ensure to all the people that uh, uh, all their uh, the question arrived will be addressed to the different uh, uh, panelists and speakers. Uh, I think that uh, due to the fact that the most part of the question are more related to how the platform can add uh, can help in uh, um, access to the funding uh, in uh, create networking. So I think that uh, uh, everything could be uh, more clear during the process. So uh, the expression of interest that we uh, we share at the end of the meeting uh, is uh, um, so aimed to this. So uh, uh, please fill in the. Uh, uh, survey that we share at the end of the, the meeting. And in this way, you will be involved in the process and you uh, have the possibility to cl clarify uh, your doubt about the platform during the process. So now, thank you very much, Nora, for uh, your chair. And I uh, give the floor to Stefan. Um, in the meantime, I share my screen uh, to collect all the input from the uh, the panelists. Thank you very much, Kaitan, and uh, thanks, Norhan, for facilitating uh, the first uh, panel and to all the panelists. Uh, it was a very fruitful um, exchange here. Um, so now, uh, and we have just a quick round, please. So everybody can might want to state one, two, or, or, or three points. Uh, what are the needs to be addressed by the AU EU platform for research and innovation on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture? Um, I will start here. I cannot see it here now on the list, but I wrote it here on my site. I would like to start with Mary, please. Mary, could you please um, share with us which needs have to be most urgently being addressed by the platform? Please, Mary, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. I look at the, the table and all the three are so essential. Um, I think for research and um, innovation institutions would go for the exchange of knowledge and then um, network building. This is key for research to have impact 
globally. There must be that network amongst partners. So um, then there's the exchange of knowledge. And um, I think all of them are so important. I, I, I think that that's what I think in terms of exchange of knowledge, essential network building and access to information. Without information, you cannot build on what is available. Without information, you cannot promote or expand your horizon. So all, all the three <laughs> needs are so important. Um, and I think it should all be taken as such that all these areas are areas that are essential for yeah, institutions yeah. to to take on board. Actually. Yeah. Allow me to interrupt you, Mary, briefly, because uh, perhaps there's a misunderstanding. So indeed, I fully agree with you uh, that these topics we are on in the, the title of, of the columns are all important. Uh, this round here is about uh, which concrete needs do you see? And they might fit under exchange of knowledge or access to information or network building. Perhaps I didn't raise the question um, properly or it was not clear why we have this table here. So do you, uh, did, can you identify for us some needs that has to have to be addressed by the platform? And my colleagues uh, from CM will type it then in here, but just briefly, you can use simply keywords. Okay, so I have strengthening the technical competence of stakeholders. Strengthening the technical competence of stakeholders. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The broader stakeholder engagement, better networking. I also have um, e-learning and also boosting, boosting e-marketing. Is also important. E -marketing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see that also as an important factor. Yes, and then I also have increased knowledge on entrepreneurship and information innovation. So innovation to prepare graduates for the job market. I see that also as an important factor. Uh, colleagues from CM, I do not find it now here in the list. Perhaps my screen comes a bit later in. So Mary mentioned uh, e-learning and e-marketing. Not sure what you colleagues uh, see now, but um, okay, here it comes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Could you please repeat the last point just with a keyword, uh, Mary? It was about entrepreneurship. Yes, I said in increasing knowledge on entrepreneurship and innovation to prepare graduates for the job market. Thank you very much. Um, let's come to the next of the panelists. Thank you very much, uh, Mary. Thank Eric, you. Uh, which needs would you uh, uh, state that have to be addressed by the platform? Um, uh, thanks, thanks a lot, Stephen. Uh, first of all, I think the, the, the most important to me looks for the access to information. And by that, I mean, People to know the the, the 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 importance and the objectives of the of, of the network, the, the 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 objectives and the importance of the network. Mm -hmm. So and knowledge about the objectives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the objectives and the importance of, of mm -hmm. the network and and the benefits, and then and then uh, in, in terms of the exchange of uh, communication, you need the. Uh, an effective uh, communication platform uh, that would be very, very important for me. Then for network building, for network building, it does not have to be just erratic. They must be defining the, defining the types of networks. What kind of networks are we talking about? Because we, so we, we, the, the networks must be strategic, not just networks for the purpose of it. And the other thing I would like to see from this partnership is what difference would this partnership bring from the other partnerships? Well, we have other platforms. We've got uh, FARA, we've got PyPad, uh, we've got uh, various others. What would be unique about the, this uh, 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 international research platform uh, from the LIPFNCC? Uh, I think, and then of course, for the, for the research institutions, 
they, they will need to, to see the, the benefits of the cutting edge research, that the research to come from this platform is, 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 is an excellent research. For the funders, they will need to see benefits for their money. No one wants to invest money in a platform where they don't see the direct benefits of the research that they've funded. And of course, for the, for the end users and food market, I talked about the economic benefits. How, how will this, this benefit the economic income by, 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 by the agricultural impact or food security impact from this network? And what benefits, economic benefits uh, from the agricultural production? Uh, I think those are the few things I would like to, to, to mention, uh, Stefan. Thank you very much, Eric, uh, for these comments. I do not see them now here on the list, but perhaps the colleagues are working on it. You mentioned that there is a process needed uh, for uh, the network development. Uh, it should be, you stated this as a need. Uh, it should be clarified what is the uniqueness of uh, the platform and uh, uh, also a process to ensure research quality um, and um, also, which are the benefits from the platform for the stakeholders. So while the colleagues are writing this down, the background, thank you very much, Eric, for your valuable contributions. I would come to uh, the next colleague here on my list. This is Henning. Henning, which needs would you state have to be addressed by the platform most urgently? Please use keywords, keep it short and simple. Thank you very much. So uh, I want to build on what Eric said, the platform has to provide selling points. So uh, which then facilitates that everyone can actually integrate their own. Um, there must be space to develop joint business models. And the network actually has to put research and innovation in the service of change. And to do this, uh, I think there, there was a very nice topic we had in another workshop. Someone came up with terms from digitization. We need design thinking. We need a joint theory of change. We need a joint story at a meta level. And then below this, you have action levels where you can put in place the, 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 the actual collaborations. Because um, at the end of the day, we want to actually come up with research-based recommendations, which then are again the basis for, for decisions to be taken at policy level, at market level, at farmers level, and also at end users level. So that's the network building. Mm. If we go to the, the access to information, I think it's very important to provide information in adequate formats. For example, recipes for change or broadcasting formats and clearly define the outcomes which can be reached. One of the topics which is very important in information management is that it must be constantly updated, and this must be funded. And uh, in order to actually integrate the diversity, uh, we need model thinking at this level, so people can actually add their own models. And uh, what is very important that the information management addresses the individuals with their need and not only always people have been mandated to represent uh, a certain actor group. Mm -hmm. And then the last topics, knowledge exchange. I think if we make ourselves clear that uh, knowledge and management and information management is not the same at all, but that knowledge is what we need to provide the ability to apply information and then affect change. This is what we have to actually to achieve. So we need a controlled knowledge management with the brokers that were mentioned to actually 
convey the ideas coming out of it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Henning. And uh, colleagues, this meeting here is uh, will be recorded. Of course, we will listen again to your contributions and bring this later here um, in this table. Therefore, um, let's just uh, go ahead, um, state those needs that have to be addressed by the platform, please, now. And we will include this, uh, then we could complete uh, afterwards this table here. I saw that Prudence uh, was already very busy in the chat. Prudence, you, uh, would you like to share just briefly your, your keywords here? Uh, this is very comfortable for the colleagues, by the way. Just copy paste. Thank you so much, Prudence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I just thought it would be easier. <laughs> yes, it <laughs> is, just, definitely. <laughs> if I just <laughs> Yeah, um, so I'm sorry, I don't know. There's a repetition, as you can see. I don't know why others repeat it. <laughs> but basically, for me, six main points. So the first one is to is to ensure um, thematic priority setting, and this is in line with the different um, cycles of the platform. So if we have a long term platform, um, you have to develop um, short term, like medium term strategies, like a five year medium term strategies that you can have as milestones to achieve within the next five years. And I think we need a platform that is flexible enough to be able to set those thematic priorities for each cycle or for each strategy of the, of the platform. Secondly is the alignment. For me, that is important. The alignment between the partners, the alignment between different strategies that are currently in existence, the alignment between different programs, initiatives, or policies. And that is what the platform should focus on. And obviously mobilizing resources, whether these are in cash or in kind, should be the responsibility of the platform. And most importantly, um, I think also this is also important for funders because you know funding. When you talk money, you have to talk about the quality of the service, and I think that is one of the reasons why from the um, that survey that was run that was presented earlier before um, we start when we started with the workshop. One of the uh, important. Um, activity for the platform that was mentioned from the funders perspective is quality service. And I think uh, to provide a quality service and that can only be done if there, is an, if there is an established infrastructure in place. And infrastructure is at different levels. Infrastructure means governance and infrastructure means communication and all of these things combined. And for that to happen, you need to ensure that there is a clear um, membership to this um, to this platform, and there is clear responsibility taken by the members of the platform. And I think it's the responsibility of the platform to ensure that there is this investment in infrastructure. The is it the fourth or the fifth? I think is the this thing is repeating. The fifth one um, is the management of uh, uh, management of, uh, of of knowledge. But before I get to that. I think we need to adopt the principle of open science. We need to we, we need to have the values of, of, of sharing because when you share, you show that you trust you know, each other. So it's very important that we adopt the principles of data sharing, the principles of open science, so that we avoid duplication. You know, and so that we also advance joint learning between different stakeholders. And um, yes, the management of, 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 of knowledge and ensuring that, and management of knowledge is so broad uh, because it's also about accessible accessibility and it's also about making sure that the knowledge filters, you know, to all the different uh, stakeholders and that the knowledge is used, is actually used and is, is, is taken up by the people that is meant for. So that's what, management of knowledge um, actually means. I think I've spoken about all the points, yeah. Thank you very much, Prudence, and um, very rich. And uh, indeed, we are coming now slowly from uh, talking about the function towards the format of the platform. Thank you very much. Um, the last contribution now, uh, please, uh, I would like to ask from Magloire. Are you still here? I cannot see you. 
Now you are here. Yeah, thank you. I'm there. I'm there. Share which needs to the platform address. Yes, thank you very much. I would like to thank you for this opportunity. So, for the research and innovation and session, I would like to first see the visibility of young innovators and startup. Of the early project is very important. Sorry, sorry, Enrico Maguire. You have to switch off the live translation to speak and to clearly, and for us to clearly understand what you, you are saying. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Is okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. I would like to give me to thank you give me this opportunity. So for the research and innovation institution is very important to uh, the first um, uh, uh, step. The, the, firstly, the visibility of young innovators and startups of the LEP for FNCCA uh, on uh, AU, EU, IREC platform for research and innovation on FNCCA. And the second step is very important to uh, involve these young innovators or startups with the design, planning, execution, and monitoring and evaluation of all national or regional projects and program research and innovation. This design is very important to facilitate and scaling up all uh, innovation or technology to improve life livelihood and fight against climate change or improve productivity in Africa. And uh, finally, it's very important for exchange of knowledge to uh, develop uh, 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 a groups, a groups of all thematic to share results of all projects uh, financed by LDP for FCC or uh, collaboration or partnership, uh, UE or UE, uh, European Union. And finally, this will make it possible to enhance the technical support of the various stakeholders to consolidate them and mobilize them for the realization of the projects of young innovators and startup or all researchers for this, uh, uh, on this uh, uh, platform. Wonderful. Thank you Wonderful. so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Magloire, Magloire for this very for this valuable very contribution. I also see here uh, in the chat, Henning also uh, shared his points. I would like to encourage uh, the other colleagues who um, shared their ideas for the needs to be addressed by the platform. Please type them in the chat. Uh, then it's easier for the CM team uh, to fill here this table so that nothing um, is getting lost. So please, you can also write it in the chat as Prudence and Henning did. Um, this might speed up uh, the process. Thank you so much for this round. And I'm handing over uh, back uh, to Gaetano um, for um, continuing with the session. One comment, Stefan. Eric, yes, please. Yes, now uh, I just look now at the table. Yes. You, you find that uh, the, the second row on end users food market is empty. And, and, and you did this activity to support the platform. So you have to think broadly. You find that some rows are heavily loaded with ideas, but some of the rows have only one idea. So if you've got to make the platform successful, you really have to enrich, uh, we have to think how to enrich all the rules. That's just an option I've just made, thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. And indeed, um, this is work in progress. Uh, so the platform, as it has been stated several times, also in other uh, events, it, it, it has to grow and it has to grow based on the needs. And uh, I'm not sure whether um, we, uh, once again listen to the records whether this table then will be completely filled um, or not but we definitely will have to um, address the end users needs also um, in the coming weeks and month of the project and of course while building um, the whole platform but thanks a lot for for pointing this uh, out. I hand over to you, Gaetano. I thank yeah. you very much uh, for uh, this round. Um, big applause for you. 
hand yeah. over to you, Gaetano. Thank you, Thanks, Stefan. colleagues. Thank you for to all the uh, panelists for uh, uh, this very useful uh, tour de table, uh, in which we collected uh, a first uh, uh, group of uh, uh, needs. Uh, as Stefan said, uh, we will go uh, uh, through all the contribution coming from the different speakers and panelists during the event and try to uh, fill in uh, the table you already said in order to have a, a, a clear uh, idea about the, the uh, uh, ca a category of needs uh, to which the platform should uh, uh, reply. Um, we are now going uh, towards the end of the, uh, the meeting, this uh, uh, event. Um, and so, uh, um, before to uh, leave, uh, uh, I would uh, I would like to um, to uh, share with you uh, uh, um, the way uh, that you can use to uh, join uh, uh, the um, the platform. Uh, as uh, we already uh, show you. Uh, uh, we are asking uh, uh, to all the uh, uh, participants not to uh, enter in uh, an already uh, established process, already established structure, but to join to a process, uh, a process that will, be, will lead to uh, the building of this uh, uh, innovative platform according with the uh, the um, uh, what uh, uh, Marta said, uh, uh, according with the, the expectation of uh, uh, the European Union and uh, uh, African Union, uh, uh, and uh, uh, taking in account uh, all the um, contribution uh, uh, raised during the, this event. Uh, and also the contribution expressed during the um, uh, raising awareness event uh, during the open consultation. Uh, in this view, uh, I share with you, um, uh, let me uh, find the, um, the link. So I'm sharing with you uh, in the, uh, è crashato tutto qui praticamente. Uh, I share with you the the link. Sorry, there is a technical problem. Uh, there is a technical problem. I'm not able to to see the the link. Okay. I don't know if you can uh, see the screen. Uh, okay. Uh, do you see my screen? Okay. Yes. No? Yes, we can see it. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, I, uh, so, uh, non vedete niente? Ok. Spano. Che no, condivido. Non riesco a capire. No, sorry. Non riesco a capire che sono qua. Ma sto cambiando la... Sto cambiando la condivisione. Condivido lo schermo. Schermo di... Condivido. 
allora ok so um, um, you can use uh, your smartphone and uh, uh, just uh, scan the uh, QR code uh, in this way you can enter in a very short survey uh, that will take you only one minute uh, in this way uh, we collect your uh, expression of interest uh, in uh, uh, join the process in join the process uh, and uh, uh, we are able also to contact you during uh, uh, to inform you during the process about uh, uh, the step beyond we are made in uh, uh, building the platform. Uh, I uh, also uh, invite you all to visit uh, uh, our website uh, um, in a um, specific uh, uh, section of the website. We uh, are going to uh, put uh, uh, frequently uh, asked question about the platform. Uh, we also upload a short uh, description of the uh, platform itself and uh, uh, the same link you see here uh, from which you can uh, uh, fill in the questionnaire and join uh, the process. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Interrompo la condivisione. No, è là. La condivisione non è, no? No. It works, I just filled it. Five, some minutes to, to allow all the participants to fill in the expression of interest to join the platform, so in three five minutes we can uh, come back to the wrap up of the event the expression of interest are just three questions very very quick and clear question about the platform Okay, Gaetano, put the link also in the chat. Yes, yes. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back in the live. 
now we are entering in the final stretch of this yeah. very very important meeting i leave the floor to getano getano please the floor is yours Thank you, carlo so uh, uh, now we are going to share the synthesis of uh, all the um, uh, intervention all the contribution in order to allow to uh, rose uh, to uh, guide the wrap up uh, uh, of the, the event. Uh, I don't know if you see the uh, the screen. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Rose, do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So, uh, as you can see, Rose, you can have uh, in front of you all the, uh, the contribution coming from uh, uh, the, the different uh, uh, session of the, um, the, the event of today. So, uh, uh, I ask you to uh, provide us uh, some key point or uh, uh, a synthesis of uh, the, um, the main outcome of the event, just to guide uh, the next, uh, uh, the further step uh, for the building of the platform. Uh, Rose, uh, the, the, the floor is yours, please. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, we, we have uh, had a very interactive and lively discussion. Starting with a, a presentation by Marta from the European Commission, who spoke to us about the importance of this project to the EC and then how they are happy that we are really trying to form this platform. And she mentioned that. Three things are important for this uh, platform, sustainability, flexibility, and innovation. Then we also listened to Carlo, who presented the results of the open consultation. And it, it also showed how stakeholders are happy about this platform and the kind of services they will require from the platform and the factors that will ensure the sustainability of the platform. And uh, yeah, these were all presented by Carlo. The results of the open consultation is available and you can read it and get detailed information. We also listened to Nora, who also presented to us about um, the, the first stakeholder dissemination that they did, the outcome of that meeting and also the meeting of the West Africa workshop, how we have been engaging with stakeholders all this while just to gather as much information that will enable us establish a platform that will be very useful for all of us. So some key issues came up, issues related to governance, the need for us to create synergies, capacity building issues came up, and then communication using modern technologies, digital platforms to enhance communication. And also, she also shows some best practices that uh, are already happening in some other projects. We also listened to Melissa, who presented about the recent stakeholder engagement week. And that engagement week was attended by over 1,400 participants. That was very impressive. And uh, she gave us some key messages from the uh, uh, stakeholder engagement week. And some of them were that we need to jointly design the platform. It should be owned by all the partners in the platform. And then uh, uh, we need to, yeah, the other things is that the platform needs to be very inclusive, democratic, such that everybody can contribute to issues related to the platform. Then we also listened to 
yeah, then from there we had a presentation from Stefan presented to us about the PIMC and how it is going to contribute to ensuring that the, we, we have methods in place to track the performance of the platform and also to monitor how the platform is performing and also how we can coordinate the platform. She gave, he gave us some uh, ways of doing that using the uh, communication concepts, for example, interfaces of concepts, uh, uh, data management, sorting house mechanisms. These are all ways by which we can coordinate the platform. Then we also listen to Jonas. Jonas presented about the IRC, IRC, the information we have gathered so far about how uh, the platform can be organized, what should be expected from the platform, and then how we can sustain the platform. So essentially, in terms of the expectations, people want to increase to see that their initiatives or there's increased impact of their projects and all their various initiatives. We also want to see that uh, there is a, a lot of knowledge base information sharing. And then the, we want to see our project be more visible, our institution be more visible when we join this platform. And in terms of sustainability, this can be achieved when we have maximum commitment from the funders and even the partners themselves need to be committed. And then uh, we need to also align whatever we are doing to the EU, uh, EU roadmap because that is what is actually guiding the formation of this platform. So we cannot operate outside the roadmap. And then we need to be able to ensure that there is strengthened collaboration and also to demonstrate the value addition of this uh, platform to the high level policy dialogues, which is also very important. Then from there, we uh, had the panel discussion, which was chaired by Noran and, uh, and Stefan. And there too, a number of issues came up from the discussion. Uh, I think I, I actually made a lot of points, but uh, yeah, okay, let me read what is being projected. So we heard from the speakers, Mary, students, Henning, and all of them shared to us some of the key challenges. And I remember Stefan uh, uh, Henning said that it is very difficult to reach the access. Our target access are very difficult to reach. So that is something we need to take into consideration. How can we make it easy that those we are targeting, the farmers, the food processors, and all these people can easily be reached so that we seek their needs and be able to address those needs. Then uh, the partnership, we need to ensure easy access to information, co-creation came up. Inclusivity is very important. And then the need for us to ensure that we involve all stakeholders right from the beginning of, of the platform. At the planning stage or at the time we are designing the platform, these stakeholders need to come on board. Then uh, I think the final one that we did was chaired by Stefan. Where we is that table available? The, or that's what I'm seeing here, the expectation. Yeah. Yeah, the expectation we need to involve all stakeholders. I think I am done based on the, the table being uh, projected. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Rose, for uh, this uh, uh, really uh, an overview of the, uh, the event. I, I think that. Uh, 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 we uh, collected a, 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 a quite a big uh, uh, amount of material that can feed uh, 
the further uh, job for uh, the consortium about the platform. So uh, my personal point of view is that uh, given a look to the uh, question and answer and the interaction on the chat, uh, uh, there is a, a huge number of uh, people who attended the, the meeting, uh, very interested, very keen to, to know uh, more about the platform, to uh, understand how to join and to uh, understand how the platform can improve uh, uh, their day-by-day -day activity uh, in the research and innovation uh, uh, field uh, uh, of food nutrition and sustainable agriculture. So uh, I think that uh, for as a world package four, uh, that is uh, more devoted to the communication, uh, our task is uh, to well communicate to all these people uh, uh, um, about uh, the platform and about uh, uh, the services that the platform can provide, collecting also uh, the needs from the uh, general uh, um, the wide public uh, and uh, uh, for the, the consortium uh, the task is to uh, try to design the platform uh, in a way that is uh, simple, inclusive uh, and uh, uh, easy to, uh, to access. So uh, uh, we use the uh, World Cloud as a sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, milestones. We try to transform this uh, World Cloud in an infographic to be uh, placed on the website. In this way, we have uh, in front of us uh, every day uh, the scope of these or the characteristics of this platform. So. Uh, I would thank you, you all for uh, your passions, for your attention, uh, and uh, especially to uh, the speaker and uh, very kind uh, um, panelists that uh, really contribute with their skill to the, to the debate. Thank you to all the chair, chairperson, and uh, um, in the next day, you will find uh, all the presentation and the contribution on the website. So uh, keep in touch with the, the web and with the social media channel. Um, uh, so uh, thank you all. And uh, uh, I would like to thanks also uh, all the work package for uh, colleagues for uh, uh, this effort uh, that uh, lead to a, a successful meeting. Thank you, Gaetano. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank all the, all, all the team that he has been working for this event, my colleague and Claudio Bogliotti, of course, and all the partners that uh, were involved in the, in the organization and for all their ex excellent support. Uh, particular, very, very particular thanks to Massimiliano Bianchi, our colleague that is behind uh, the computer every, every time and uh, all time. So, our social media manager who manages all the exchange on Twitter and uh, Facebook. So, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I just conclude this very interesting meeting and invite all of you to follow our channel, our website and uh, the Agora, the newsletter, of course. And Thanks also to the interpreter for the job. Uh, so uh, have a good day and uh, uh, stay tuned with the, uh, the next step of the LEAP for FNSSA uh, project. All the best. Thank you. Thank much. you. Thank you, Gaetano. Ciao. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Grazie.